Good evening. It's good to see everybody this evening and glad that you're with us. And, and if you're visiting with us, we want you to know you're our honored guest. And we're glad you're here and want you to stick around a while after services so we can get to know you better. Tonight, I'd like us to look in the book of Joshua. And so if you would, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Got a couple passages in Joshua I want to look at um, for our time together this evening. And just kind of some things I've been thinking with a little bit about his day and time and connection with our day and time. And anyway, we'll have a couple observations on it for a few moments this evening. I want us to look, well, the first chapter is not that long, so I want to read it and, and look at it, but the starting in the beginning of it. But what takes place right before this, at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, is that Moses has gone on to the top of the mountain, up Mount Nebo, and has died, and God has buried him, and the nation has mourned over his death. And... You know, who's going to lead? Who's going to take over? And, and we see that it's going to be Joshua. Joshua was the commander of the military. He was the leader of the Israelites' army. He was Moses', I guess you could call him understudy and helper, and was there, and he's the natural choice to be the leader from then on. And of course, he's the one that God chooses. And that's what part of this is about, and, and in which God chooses him. And I want us to look at some of the things that are here and draw some things from it, and then we'll slip on over to chapter 5 and look at some things over there. Joshua 1, 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory." No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause the, this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous." Be careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success." Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What a powerful statement that God makes to Joshua. Joshua is now the commander and God says to him, Moses, my servant is dead and now you are in charge. The way that I was with Moses, I will be with you. The way that, and if you uh, do not leave me, I will not forsake you. And he tells him again and again to be strong and courageous. Joshua has been a strong and courageous man all along. Joshua and Caleb were the two spies that went into the promised land and saw what it was and saw the giants, saw the big cities but yet heard God's promises and came back and told the people, we can do this. This land is ours. And we will be able to conquer them. And of course, the rest of the people 
listen to the other ten spies. And that's why they weren't able to go into the land. And for 40 years, Joshua and Caleb have been with the people for all that time. You know, I think if I had been in Joshua and Caleb's shoes and had wandered the wilderness for 40 years, I think I would have said something to the effect, if you'd only listen to me, or I told you so. You know, we would be in the promised land, in the land of milk and honey, if you'd only listen to me. But that's not really the way Joshua did it. Joshua stayed with the people, led the people, and led the military. And now here he is. He's an older man, and he's, he's, he's probably around the age of Moses, when Moses led the people out of Egypt. And so now it's his day. And God says to him to be strong and courageous. Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, I'll be with you. What a great thing it is to have leaders that have that kind of understanding, that have that kind of courage, and have that kind of faith. You know, if we think about it, you know, having leaders that that have that determination and have that drive are absolutely essential. I think we all realize that it's very unlikely that we'll get those in the political realm, but that's not where they really should come from. Where we should look for leaders like that are here in, in our congregation. You know, certainly uh, the elders that we have and, and, the, and the things that, that Andy and myself would proclaim, you know, from God's Word, we need to make sure that we don't turn to the right or turn to the left, that we stay true. And especially with our elders, that we have men that would have the courage and the faith to stay true and stay faithful to God. God's promise to Joshua is, I'll be with you and, and, and do this and And he begins later after that in verse 10 and following, um, telling them more about what's going to happen. And let's look at this as we read 10 through the end of the chapter. Uh, See what he says. It says, And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, Prepare your provisions, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of our among you shall pass over armed before your brothers and shall help them until the Lord gives rest to your brothers as He has to you. And they also shall take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and shall possess it, the land that Moses the servant of the Lord gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. And then answered Joshua, All that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we commanded, obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you, as He was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your words, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. So what we have here is Joshua sends to his commanders and tells them to tell the people, in three days we're going to cross the Jordan River. And he tells the individuals, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These were all tribes that asked for their part of the land on the eastern side of the Jordan River. Their land was going to be back on the other side of the Jordan. And they weren't going to cross with their possessions. But what God said through Moses to them was, you can do this, but you need to go with your warriors and help us settle the land. And when the land is settled, when we've won all the victories, then you can go back to your your wives, your children, and your possessions and have your inheritance on that side of the land. And so he's telling them that. And all the people, 
after they hear about the plan and they notice that Joshua is the leader, what do they say? They say to Joshua at the very end of the chapter, only be strong and courageous. You see, that's all we ask is be strong and courageous. Follow after Moses. Do what Moses did. And he says that a little earlier. And so Joshua is getting it from both sides. He's getting it from God. God again and again said, be strong and courageous. And then put very, be very strong and courageous. And now even the people are behind him and saying, be strong and courageous. They cross the Jordan River a few days later after they've sent two spies into Jericho, the first city they're going to come to. And those two spies come back and tell about how they can get into the city and they spend time with Rahab and Rahab asks to have her family spared. And so what's going on here is, is they send the spies, they hear back from the spies and they cross the Jordan River on dry land. And that, that's a great story in and of itself. The, the water stops. They, they take 12 rocks from there and they make a, a memorial on the other side and all the people cross the Jordan River. Um, that's about as amazing as crossing the Red Sea when they did that. And, 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 you know, to stop a river. I mean, you know, it didn't dry up. It just stopped and God stopped it. And so they cross over. They cross the Jordan. And when they cross the Jordan, get on the other side, what they're getting ready to do is go and go against the city of Jericho. And Jericho is the first city that they come to. And right before they get ready to go to Jericho, a very interesting account takes place. And it's in Joshua chapter 5. And please turn with me there. This is what I primarily want us to look at a couple minutes this evening. And that is in Joshua 5, starting in verse 13. It says this. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing before him, and a sword was drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us, or are you for our adversaries? Very interesting thing. They're about ready to go to Jericho. They're about ready to, to deal with this first city. And Jericho, from what I have uh, read before, that the, the, the archaeology that's looked at Jericho recognized Jericho is a big city. And the walls of Jericho are big. And of course, if you remember earlier on, Rahab's family lives in the wall. And so what they did was is they made the wall so thick and big that you would have homes inside the wall itself. And so that's a pretty wide wall. That's a pretty strong wall for an ancient city. And so it was a very big, strong, powerful ancient city. Coming at it with a bunch of people that are children of slaves. <laughs> They're not. They're not warriors. They're not a well-organized group. They're just children of those people that were in Egypt. And so they're not, you know, they're, they're just really not, um, they're not really ready for this except for the fact that God's with them. And Joshua is spying out. He's looking, you know, he's got the spies back. And I just, I may be reading too much into this, but, but just looking at this, it seems like Joshua's alone. And Joshua is contemplating, and, and I imagine a lot, of, uh, a lot of leaders, a lot of battle tacticians might just go off and spend a little time alone. And he's probably thinking about what all he's done, what all he's got to do, and what he's about ready to lead the people into. Everything changes when you cross that river, because now you're on somebody else's territory. In a lot of ways, they're trespassing. Now, God's given them the land, but in the eyes of everybody on the other side of that Jordan, they're trespassing. And, and, and things are going to happen soon. And as he's by Jericho, he looks and he sees a man. And he walks up to this man, to this individual. He sees this individual has a drawn sword. Now that takes some courage. 
Here he is. There's an individual with a drawn sword. Of course, Joshua's a tough customer anyway. He knows that God's with him. He's a mighty warrior. And he has the courage to walk up to somebody with a drawn sword. We might be tempted to yell from a distance. But he goes up to him. He goes up to this individual and he asks this question. Are you for us or for our adversaries? Think about that question. Are you for us or are you for them? Are you for the other side? And I think sometimes we want to know the answer to that question. And I think we wonder sometimes that about God. God, are you for us or against us? And in reality, Joshua is answering the wrong question. Let's look at the answer that is given to him. After Joshua asks, are you for us or are you for our adversaries? And he said, no. To which question? Us or adversaries? The answer is no. Are you for us or against us? No. Well, he's, he's given no on both accounts, isn't he? But he says something different. He says, no, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. You see, Joshua shouldn't ask the question, are you for us or against us? The question Joshua needed to ask, am I doing what God wants? You see, that's, those are two different things. And in reality, that's what we ought to ask. God, are you for us or against us? Instead, what we ought to ask is, are we doing it the way God wants? You see, because God is on the side of right. God is on the side of victory. And in reality... This man, this individual, uh, I, I guess when you look at it, you recognize he's an angel, but, it, but Joshua sees him as a man. This individual is the commander of the Lord's army. And basically what he's saying is, that choice is up to you. I'm the commander of the Lord's army and I'm here. I'm here now. The question is, are we going to fall in line behind Him or not? You see, God is going to be victorious. God's commander is going to win. And God is going to have the great, the great victory. The question is, are we going to be on that side or not? He says, I'm the commander of the Lord. And I think there's also a message here to remind Joshua of humility. You see, Joshua's been the leader of the Lord's army, the Israelites. He's been the leader of the Israelites. He's led them into battles before. He's, he's defeated the Amalekites. And he's, he's, he's a hardened veteran at, at, at doing what God wants. And, and he's... You know, he's been a spy in the land and he's been Moses' right-hand man. And he just got done a little while ago having God say, be strong and courageous and I'll be with you at everything you do. But there's one dose, I think you might say, of humility coming to him in this. You see, Joshua might have been tempted to think that he was the commander of the Lord's army. But in reality, it was someone much higher than him that was. And Joshua asked the question, are you with us or for our adversaries? And he says, no, I'm the commander of the Lord, the Lord's army. And so immediately after that, he says to Joshua, take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. You see, 
Joshua was told, don't stray to the right or left of what I've said. Be strong and courageous. And I have to think he's thinking about his battle plan. He's thinking about what he's going to do. He's thinking about how he's going to attack this problem. And just how he's going to go about this. As the, the, the tactician, as the leader of Israel. And right at that time, this man comes and says, I'm the commander of the Lord. You're on holy ground. And Joshua kicks off his sandals and he worships. He worships God. Just in case he was tempted to be arrogant, prideful, it's being reinforced to him that God has got it covered. That God is the one in charge. And then immediately when the commander of the Lord says this to him, God speaks to him in the, verse, in the next few verses of chapter 6. And God gives to, to uh, Joshua one of the most outrageous battle plans that ever was. Remember the battle plan for Jericho? Here's what you're going to do. We're going to march around the city six times, uh, one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, we'll march seven times, and then we'll blow the trumpets. And that's it. You know, I don't know what stress was going on in Joshua's mind, but I'm going to hazard a guess to think that probably wasn't his battle plan. I doubt that's the way he thought he was going to defeat Jericho. But see, God said be strong and courageous. God said don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left. They crossed the, the, the river, the Jordan River, and they're staring down the city of Jericho, the great obstacle that's ahead. And, you know, he's a, he's a bright man. He's a powerful man. He has to be formulating a battle plan in his mind. I mean, he'd be ridiculous not to. And he's contemplating that. And that's when the commander of the Lord comes and says, here it is. And gives him the battle plan. To Joshua's credit, they do it. They exercise the battle plan. The city walls fall. And they win one of the most decisive battles in all of human history. And the Israelites plunder the city of Jericho, a very wealthy city at the time, all because he got the answer to the question he needed, but not the answer that he asked. And so here's what I want to ask us, what I want to suggest to us, what I want to put in our minds and our hearts. When we think about our world, when we think about our nation, when we think about our state, our county, our town, our congregation, our families, let's don't ask the question, God, are you for us or against us? But instead, let's ask ourselves the question, are we doing all we can to be on the Lord's side? Are we doing all we can to serve Him, to please Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him? Are we living the way that He wants? In the way that He wants? And look at it in those terms. Because see, you know, God is here. God's help is near. And God's help is there for the asking. And in reality, we need to make sure that we are on His side much greater than us petitioning Him to be on our side. It's actually the opposite. We need to do our best to be on His side. Because, you know what? His side, regardless of where it is, is victorious. Period. And so whatever God's doing, wherever God is, whatever focus God has, that's what we need to be a part of. We need to move our will to His will. And not try to move His will to us. We've got to move ourselves 
to Him. And anything we can do to do that. And so, when that comes down to us, when that comes down to the rubber meeting the road, and we think, okay, God, why aren't you doing something in this world right now? When you look at all this mess that's going on, why aren't you doing something? Maybe God's answer to us is, well, I've got a few million Christians on the planet. What do you want? I've got a word that is powerful enough to save the whole world. What do you want? I've sent my son. I've sent my spirit. I've got all these things. And, and you know, my son said, if whatever you ask for in my name, I'll give it to you. Whatever you seek for, you'll find. And we think of wanting the God to do something in, in reality. He sent us. Jesus said to His disciples to go into all the world. That was God's plan to reach the world. He told His disciples to go. Go with the gospel. Proclaim the truth. And you know what? The first century world was a mess. It really was. Kind of like today. And so God's answer would be to us, Go into the world with my gospel. Go into the world telling about my son. Go to the world with my book. Because that's what went into a troubled and lost and dying world in the first century. And that's what the world needs in the 21st century. The world needs Jesus as much as it ever has. And it's certainly up to us to be the salt, to be the light in this world. Just like Joshua, it was up to him to accept what the Lord's command was. Joshua didn't have to go feed, defeat the people from Jericho on his own. He just simply had to do it God's way. And that's what it did. And that's how it worked. And that's the same way for us. Let's go to God in prayer as we close out. Lesson will be yours. Righteous Father, we thank You so much that You are our God and You are so good to us. We spend so much time wishing, wanting, and hoping for You to be on our side. But help us to learn and through the eyes of faith that we should do all we can to be on Your side. To follow Your will and to let Your will shape our lives. And we should stop trying to make You do what we want You to do. But instead, let us find our will in Yours. Help us in all ways to live for You each and every day. We pray that we would all live after Your plan, after Your truth, in the way that You would have us to do. And we know that if we're faithful to You, that You are beyond faithful to us. And we thank You for all, especially for Your Son. It's in His name we pray. Amen. If we can help you in any way this evening to get your life right, to baptize you to become a Christian, or if you need to come for prayers for strength or encouragement. If we can help you in any way, would you come while we stand and sing?